All right. I need to take you back to 1996. You, how many of you guys have done the uh, lottery for the master's tickets? Uh, you ever put your name in there? Ever, ever got denied? Like, get that letter all the time. 1996, I get the letter that you want to get. Congratulations. You get 12 tickets. Four for Monday, four for Tuesday, four for Wednesday. The biggest decision I had to make is who's the other three guys that, I, that I'm going to take? Dan, I've just met you this year, and if you knew I had 12 tickets to the Masters coming up, you'd probably be best friends. We'd be best buddies, <laughs> exactly. Well, I sent an email email out to my three guys that were a big part of my wedding. I was married just under two years. So I sent out, we had AOL at the time. Here's the deal, I got the house. Uh, we're gonna go to the Masters, three days, are you in? Oh, immediately, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. I sent back, do you wanna check with your wife to make sure? They said, no, 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 we're not gonna do that now. We'll do that later. I'm going to Augusta with you. So you come into 97, uh, this is when we're gonna go. House is done. I said, well, hey guys, why don't we go to Tampa? We'll play golf Friday, Saturday, Sunday, drive over to Augusta, that makes sense, right? To get that golf in before the Masters. And that's what we did. We get there on the property on Monday, and I've never had my legs like just almost go out for me from stepping on the property of Augusta National. It was something incredible because I could hear the wind in the Georgia Pines. I could actually smell the April azaleas like they're right in front of me. And to take that bite out of that pimento cheese sandwich, there is nothing better than that exploding your taste buds in Augusta. And we just raced over the first tee. And when you're seeing Mr. Nicholas, Mr. Palmer, Mr. Player, I got chills right now just telling you because that experience was at a higher level than, than 10. And then we heard about this young kid that just came on the scenes, 21 years old. Well, let's go check out this kid. I've heard a lot of golf shots before and I'm gonna need to take a drink of water every now and then. But the drive sound that came off his driver, it was like a cannon going off. Kid was carrying it like 300 yards in the fairway. We just had to go watch this kid. Do you remember that 21 year old? Tiger. Tiger. Do you remember? I'm gonna go back in history on that Thursday opening round. What did he shoot for his first nine out there? Do you remember? A 40. Four over, you're out. You're done. You're going to go home. It doesn't matter what you do on the back nine. But what did he do on the back nine? Close. He went 40 on the front, 30 on the back. Get some kind of back in it. Friday, Saturday, Sunday comes. Who slips on the green jacket that Sunday afternoon? But Tiger Woods. And how many shots did he win by? One, two, 12. There's a message I wanna pause in on that. It does not matter how you start this game of life, but it's how you finish it. How many of us are on the back nine of life? Maybe not played that well in the front, but you're making the turn to the back. And as I made the turn of the most spectacular week of my life with three of my buddies, I did not think life could get any better than that. Fly back home to Cedar Rapids, Iowa. I am expired, I have nothing left in me. I walk in at midnight, front door, my wife's waiting for me to say, Scott. I can no longer stay in this marriage, I am done. Scott, for the last few months, you've been going here, going here, traveling there, and don't you remember? You lost your job six months ago. We have no income coming in. And I'm challenging you on these expenses. Guys, you know how bad it got? I got a separate P.O. box for our financial statements to go to because when I went on all these trips, I didn't want the mail to come and she'd see how much I'm burying her in debt. It was brutal. I was losing my identity. I wanted to be known as the guy that made a lot of money and, and have my name going. I'm gonna be so transparent with you in 96. Tom Lehman won the player of the year. And every time Lehman got on the leaderboard in any event, I was like, that's me. My name's on the leaderboard. I'm going to the top. I'm the player of the year. 
The enemy was pouring in so many lies to me to put a wedge in my own marriage by making these ridiculous decisions financially behind her back. And she called me out. My 36th birthday was that Saturday of the Masters and I looked up and said, God, I need help. It's the first time in my life I ever looked to the heavens. That was my first prayer of my life ever. Well, I used to find all my answers at a bookstore, especially the self-help uh, area. And they had this book highlighted that day called In His Grip. I know you probably all can't see it, but Billy Graham did the introduction and I heard he was quite a preacher. Never heard of him. You know who did the foreword? Tom Lehman did the foreword. In his grip, Foundations for Life and Golf. And I don't know why I do this. I always, I always open a book, book in the middle. I start there, and there's like these great pictures. But there's a Bible verse in there. Actually, two verses, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. I brought the book home and asked my wife at the time, do we have a Bible? She says, why in the world do you need a Bible? You've never opened it, I know. I've never opened it. Go check your bookshelf. you got a lot of other books out there. You know, at the bottom, there's a box with a Bible in it from the best man of my wedding's parents in 1987. Scott, trust in the Lord and he will take care of you. And I found Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. And you ready for what it says? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean down on your own understanding, but then all you always acknowledge him. He will direct your path. That was my first moment of opening up God's word. So I came to the wife and said, what's next? We have to go to church. She goes, Scott, you go to church. And I hope you find the truth. And when you do, just tell me where are we at in our finances. Well, I went to church and heard Pastor John week after week after week. And then one Sunday came, he said, some of you guys here are struggling. Your marriage is about at his breaking point. I'm like, how do you know my story? In fact, you're in so much financial ruin, you don't even know what you're going to do with all that debt. And the verse that he camped out in, are you ready? Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. You're going to have to trust in the Lord. And we're going to give you an opportunity to commit your lives to Jesus and ask for that forgiveness and start doing life right with him. I didn't do it at the church. At home, office that I had, I fell to my knees. Similar experience that Brian had and gave my life to Christ. Went to the pastor the next Sunday and said, Pastor John, I gave my life to Jesus. He goes, great. There's four guys meeting every Saturday at 6 a.m. They're going to go in the Word of God. You need to start diving into the Bible. They're going to guide you to that. I'm like, okay. So I get there and the guys go, hey, um, we heard you're married, you're a golfer, um, everything at home good? I'm like, yeah, it's pretty good. They're like, yeah, pretty good doesn't usually mean real good. So yeah, my wife's ready to leave. She's done. One of the guys said, not on our watch. We're gonna pray for that heart of hers. And you're gonna go back and start serving her. I said, serving her, what do you mean? You know, laundry, dishes, help her out of the house. I said, my mom did all that in Wisconsin. Let me tell you, Scott, she's not your mama. She's your wife. And if you're going to follow Jesus, he came to serve and not to be served. You go back in that home and start serving. Well, I went home and saw a big old pile of towels on the bed. I'm going to start folding towels. Start folding them. And here comes my wife. What are you doing? Folding towels. Can't you see? Just want to help out. She goes, that's really weird. You've never done anything like that. But if you are going to fold towels, I like them folded in thirds and not in quarters, so she's, she has a system. I try doing dishes. Oh, boy. I said, one day, I'll make a list of the grocery store. I'll go get it. Week after week, just trying to serve her. Meet with a guy Saturday morning after about a month, two months. Like, how's it going at home? I go, guys, I'm not getting anything in return. I'm serving her, you know, what off? They go, whoa, 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 whoa. You're serving, thinking you're gonna get something in return? That's not the way it works with Jesus. He serves unconditionally. Scott, you gotta keep doing it and not expecting anything in return. 
but we're going to keep praying for that girl's heart. And God's going to move. You're going to see him move. Six months later, I'm getting ready for church. I go solo for those first six months. Wife comes in the bathroom and said, hey, can you wait a little longer? I'm going to join you for church. I about dropped and fell dead in the bathroom. I said, why? She goes, I don't know what's going on with you, Scott, but I want what you've got. I'm coming to church with you. And it was just a month later that she gave her life to Christ and asked me, could we start doing this thing called marriage the right way? We're driving home. I said, I'm going to share with you the financial situation, and it's going to be a bomb to drop on you. And I pray that someday you'll forgive me for what I'm going to show you. So I go. She goes to the kitchen table. I go down, get the finances, had a number circled, how much in debt. She goes, that's the truth. I said, that's the truth. I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. She goes, Scott, have you ever heard the truth will set you free? I go, I'm going to guess that's in the Bible. She goes, it is, and you're free tonight. I forgive you. Let's do this right, Scott. Guys, the power of Jesus living in the center of your life. Leslie's up there somewhere, checking you guys in tonight. This next May 27th, we'll celebrate 30 years of marriage. Only by God's grace, only by his mercy. Not perfect, even after almost 30 years, not perfect. But having Jesus there and guiding us and directing us through his word is what it's all about. She then said, well, now we've got to get revenue coming back in. So why don't you get a job in the golf industry? She said, Scott, you'd be a really good golf instructor. Why don't you get certified to teach? I'm like, I've got to go back to school. She goes, go. When your wife kind of says, go, you go. So I got certified, opened up a Quad City Golf Academy. We had Inscript wristbands made. And I helped guys with a game, but they'd say, well, tell me about in the script. This is 1998 now, and I'm just sharing my story. Church said, why can't we do a golf tournament? I got love to help you do a golf tournament. I did that. So seven, eight years, God was prepping us, both Leslie and I, to start a golf ministry. Now, when I first brought it up to her, she goes, hey, can we tap the brakes a little bit? How are we going to pay the bills? How do we actually, you know, bring revenue? So I'm not sure about that yet. But we can do a golf tournament. And in, in 2007, we felt God's tugging to move here to Nashville, Tennessee to start in his grip. We had a golf ministry in a box. We could help other churches do golf tournaments like we did back in Iowa. Here's God's providence. Lifeway heard about it and said, hey, we'd like to do an article. Gary McClure, I met you then back in 06, 07, crazy, in the marketing department. Did an article on In His Grip, helping churches. We have one church, my own church, one a year. That article, are you ready? From 07 to 2017, 10 years, Leslie and I working out of our bonus room, did 216 in his grip events. Over 18,000 men played and 726 raised their hand to give their lives to Jesus Christ in those 10 years. In the garage, when we're packing up all the player gifts throughout those years, we're like, Lord, we're two fish. Please feed the multitude. And he did. In 2017, churches were trimming their budgets. Men's ministry was really kind of going to the side for doing a recheck. And my boards challenged me. So Gary, you've been a board member since day one um, through the years, and thank you. I'm beyond grateful. Steve Shelton came on board these last few years to help really shepherd what God was doing in and through the ministry. Thank you. I am beyond grateful. Troy came on board to help shepherd what God is doing. Thank you. Brett Whitley, thank you so much from day one. Uh, where did I have him right here in the front row? Thank you. Can't do it without you guys. Brian, thank you. So as we pivoted, you guys challenged me, what's it look like? I go, I just love to get guys in the word of God. And I do a journal, it's grip. G is God's word. R, what does it reveal? I, how am I gonna implement it in my life? And then P, we're gonna pray it out. When Brian lost Patricia, he asked if we could do a weekly Bible study at his club. Madison, 
thank you for opening up your doors that that time and from all the way through the years thank you we started a group there steve's like can i bring it to the grove of course let's get a group going at the grove so from that right now we're at 25 weekly bible studies going on at golf courses all throughout the southeast and we are just getting warmed up God is showing us, it's the Southeast right now, that's our target, it's the Bible Belt, because it's all grassroots. We're not going on knocking on doors, we're waiting for the door to open us. And we just walk in and share a simple G-R-I-P. And it's so easy to duplicate. Rob, I look at you and, and just how you pull me aside and say, hey, we, we can help you with this, and there's your generosity. So many of you have been alongside of us over the years that we can't do it without you. Right now, we're at three full-time staff. When I said, hey, we doubled our staff, it was Leslie and I now? They're like, well, you kind of 10 x it because we know how much Leslie does and how much you do. So, uh, <laughs> But we have three full-time, three part-time, and we're looking for major expansion in the next three years. Big goal for us as a ministry, 1.5 million in the next three years, 500,000 per year, the next three years, additional to our existing budget. We know the areas that we're going to. Alabama, where's Anthony? Anthony came to us in Oxford, Alabama. Now there's four groups in Alabama and there's other clubs getting ready to go. Mississippi's on fire, I don't know what's going on there. Little Rock, Arkansas, it's Chanel, they wanna get started. So this is just is happening weekly. You know what I'm learning at 63 years old? It's really sad. It's getting me to this long in life. The more that I let go daily, the more the Lord expands organically. It's word of mouth. It does not say in Scott's grip, in my grip. It's in his grip. And God is looking for his people to raise their hand and say, God, I'm available. Use me. The harvest is plentiful. One of your precious ladies asked me earlier tonight, why so much focus on men? Oh, what about our ladies? Don't we, don't we mean something? Absolutely. Are you kidding me? When I did a, a tournament with Promise Keepers in 05, this is the stats. You ready? If you reach a child first with the gospel of Jesus Christ, 3.5% of the time the family will follow. If you reach the ladies first with the gospel, 22% of the time the family will follow. You know what the percentage is if you reach a man first, that the percentage of the family will follow? 93%. Our target is men. Our target is men on the back nine, because if we reach guys at my age and other similar, we're gonna meet the Joels, we're gonna meet the Ryans, we're gonna come alongside you to disciple, to walk with you guys on the front nine. But guys, look around, how many of us are in the back nine? We can't just exist in this game called life. God is calling us out to be available, to just raise your hand, use me. And I think there's some of you sitting here tonight that have either been praying or been looking for an opportunity. Come and join us in this group. It's a journey. We get to do it around this great game called golf. But the most important thing is to reach the hearts of the men and watch life change. It's worth it for one guy. It's so worth it. Steve, I'm going to have you close out our, our time together tonight. But uh, as I finish out, in your table um, brochure that you have on there, I really want you guys to pray. What would God have you do to support this ministry? You could do monthly. You could do an annual uh you're in giving donation. But can I ask you guys boldly to go big with the donation? Have you seen maybe in a script over the years? You've been praying, how can I come and help? Um, take this envelope with a giving card. I'm gonna give you time tonight before we re release. And if you're at that point of like tonight, Scott, here, this is what the Lord's leading us to give. If it's a dollar, thank you. It's a hundred thousand dollars. Thank you. We haven't got our first million dollar donation yet. Thank you. <laughs> but what we want you to do is, if you feel comfortable, just drop it in the den caddy here. You can also bring it tomorrow at the event, or you can also mail it in. 
Can I say thank you in advance? Uh, we're, we're, we're going big for a ministry. We just feel that God's a big God. I don't want to put him in a box anymore. God, we can only do this much. Hey, once we get to 20 groups, God, that's, that's enough. I want to go big with God. Wherever he wants to go, that's where I want to go. Leslie and I have a dream that when we're in heaven, we're looking down and going, Leslie, oh, look at them. They're, they're taking it to Taiwan right now. They're, they're going in the Orient within the script. Look at what they're doing. Look at the expansion that happened. Look who's involved now. Oh, my goodness. We want it to live beyond us. And we can only do that to get ahead of this growth curve that's happening. And we need finances to do that. We're not just a donation base. We have membership, our events, we have product sales. So we're diversified in our revenues for a nonprofit. Leslie said there's no way we're starting in a script as donation based only. Most founders spend all their time fundraising. She goes, you can't do that. You need to go reach men for Jesus. So we are diversified in that. I think it's important for you guys to know that. Steve, I need you to close out this time. If you got one of the items for the auction, it will be available for you to take home tonight. Leslie's kind of coordinating all that right now. And if you're playing in tomorrow's event, on the way out, you can grab your box with your uh, straight down uh, gear, polo, whatever you ordered on that, you can use that to take it out. But thank you so much. We're gonna do an annual renewal on this date, really close to it, we'll let you know. We have other events we do throughout this area. Uh, Brian does a big event at Pebble Beach every year for Innis Group. And just plug in. Plug in. We have a daily video you can plug into that we share our grips. This is kind of how we do that GRIP. We have a weekly life group scattered throughout the city, throughout other states. And then Steve's raised his hand on Wednesday night. They do a virtual on Zoom. We have guys calling in from all over the country getting a grip on God's word. Thank you, guys. Thank you, for wives. I pray that you understand the heart of why we're reaching your guys. Because... We want you to be better husbands, men, better fathers, better grandfathers, better sons. And I know I need that accountability. I can't do this life on my own. I just can't. Steve, why don't you close us out with a word of prayer? They've been trying to control me forever. And so I get a few things to say. <laughs> Shouldn't have done this. Right, Ryan? There you go. Hey. Uh, I've been a church guy my whole life, my entire life. Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. Very, I know what all you guys say. We got a guy that's got a great line. I'm stealing it from him tonight, right? Uh, I can't go to church. Too many hypocrites there. Tommy Thompson goes to uh, National Golf and Athletic with us. He's got the best line. He said, oh, no, no. We got room for some more. <laughs> so first thing I want to tell you, you need to be in a church. If you're not in a church, get in a church. All right? Bible believing church. But now I'm going to talk about in his grip. All right. I show up. Uh, Chuck Abbott's not here tonight, but he worried. I, man, I had a big time job. I don't like to tell a lot of people that, but he wanted me to do two hours every Friday. I said, what kind of job do you think I got? I just take off Fridays every week. Right. So we did Christian leadership concepts. Two years. He brings this knucklehead, Scott Lehman in. Well, this dude, man. He's talking about God and golf. I had four things I was going to do in retirement. I was retired at the time. God, family, old cars, and golf. I said, this dude's got 50% of my junk. I got to talk to him. We go to Chick-fil-A. We have a conversation. I'm, I'm loving what they're doing. I go to National Golf and Athletic that week. They're praying over a guy at the end. It is absolutely powerful. Haven't stopped going to this day. Can't be there this week, Brian. Take over for me. <laughs> right? What I want to tell you, you've heard Brian's story. It's a fascinating story. You've heard Scott's story. You've heard Leslie's story. You've heard Anthony's story. Where are you at, Anthony? Oxford, Alabama. Oxford, Alabama. Good stuff. Here's what I want to tell you. I'm going to tell you some stories of a few men in here today. Okay? We got Brad Beck sitting over here. Some stuff, tough stuff happened to him. He came to our meeting. He's in the Bible every day. He is a phenomenal guy. His daughter and his son now are doing their grips. His life is absolutely changed. Changed. 
and that's why we want to get them in. I got a guy sitting in here, he comes to our study on Friday morning. I won't mention his name because I didn't get permission. He said that hour every Friday morning is the best hour of the week for me because I get back right with God and what I should be doing. And then we got a good friend that you've called out, so I'm going to call him out. Dan's sitting right here. Guess he got the bad deal of riding in the golf cart with me for two days. In a row. <laughs> in a row. And he's like, you know, I used to be with the Lord, and I was doing this, and I need to get back. And, well, a guy like me ain't going to lose that opportunity. <laughs> well, you need to show up Friday morning. He's been on fire ever since. Got nothing to do with me. It's him and the Lord. So, the reason we do men is that's what we want to get. We want to get the men. And that's what we're doing every day. So look, love on your men, but send them to the meetings. <laughs> and when they act like they're tired and they can't get out of bed, get them out of bed, okay? So thank you all very much tonight. I appreciate you. We're going to have a lot of fun tomorrow playing golf, and I'm going to close this with prayer here tonight. Here we go. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this night. Thank you for the people that are in attendance here tonight. Thank you for the men here. We love the ladies. We, we want to love on them. We want to be there for them, and we want to take care of them, Lord. But our ministry is about the men. We want to get the men, man. You need to get away from the evil things of this world, and the way to do that is in the Word every day. And to get in a group of men that will hold you accountable every day with what we do. Lord, Thank you so much for in his grip. Help us to never make it about us. Help us to make it about you always. We just thank you for everything you do for us. We just ask you to make us be the men we need to be for our wives sitting here tonight, for our kids that are sitting here tonight, and we need to be walking it out every day for you in what we do. Thank you so much for Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. What's in his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you all. Amen.